Let's have a look at poetry. The power of words. Words can hurt. Words can last a long, long time. Words can make us feel. And words can make us feel different. Let's look at a poem that's one of the oldest poems here. This is called The Song of Amarkin. This was written a long, 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 long time ago by um, Amergan, who was a Milesian, and he came to have a battle about Ireland. Um, so, if you just listen to these words and see what you can think of them. I am the wind on the sea. I am the wave of the sea. I am the bull of seven battles. I am the eagle on the rock. I am a flash from the sun. I am the most beautiful of plants. I am a strong wild boar. I am a salmon in the water. I am a lake in the plain. I am the word of knowledge. I am the head of the spear in battle. I am the god that puts fire in the head. Who spreads light in the gathering on the hills? Who can tell the ages of the moon? Who can tell the places where the sun rests? The power of words to last at least a thousand years. And maybe not just so long ago, we have another poet, Japanese poet called Basho. And his words again, will last for an awful long time. They've already lasted um, 400 years. These little snapshots of poetry are something that you need to look at and where you can use words to the best effect ever. An old silent pond. A frog jumps into the pond. Splash. Silence again. Autumn moonlight. A worm digs silently into the chestnut. Lightning flash. What I thought were faces are plumes of pampas grass. And those are very gentle words. Words that have lasted at least 400 years. So when we come to look at poems, let's first look at them visually. Let's look this long thin poem and let's look at that very fat plump poem there's an awful lot of writing in that one there's a lot less writing in that one but both of them have an amazing story to tell i want you to think about there's what one two three four seven ten eleven twelve thirteen sixteen lines in this little poem but it means so very much. This is by Kay Ryan. Tenderness and Rot. Tenderness and Rot share a border and Rot is an aggressive neighbour whose iridescence keeps creeping over. No lessons can be drawn from this, however. One is not two counties. One is not meat corrupting. It is important to stay sweet and loving. It's a lovely little poem. This is a lovely little story. It's a very beautiful love story um, about a waitress who is working in one hotel and the shadow falls on her hotels in the evening and the other hotel gets all the light where the young people go and she's realising that her life is um, wrapping up itself. So if we go a little bit even more um, up to date than that, I have a lovely poem here for young people. When I go into school, sometimes I read this poem because it's a great poem to actually get them thinking about, um, this is a poem you could write yourself. This is a poem that you just say, okay, I can do this kind of poem, but I can make it my way. 
So I want you to listen to the words of this poem. This is called Granny Is, and it's by a poet called Valerie Bloom. Granny is fried dumpling and rundown, coconut drops and grater cake, fresh ground smell in the morning when we wake. Granny is loading up the donkey, basket full on market day, with fresh snapper the fishermen bring back from the bay. Granny is clothes washing in the river, scrubbing dirt out on the stone, hauling crayfish and eel from the water on her own. Granny is stories in the moonlight, underneath the gangu tree, and a spider web of magic all around we. Granny say, only the best for the grandchildren. It don't matter what to price. Don't want no one pointing finger. Granny nice. So the power of words, no matter where they come from, and that could be from a very different land, you could make your own poem about your Irish granny, or your English granny, or your American granny, and have it your own personal story about your granny. And if you don't have a granny, make up one. So the idea of words that are important, say words like fear or anxiety, if you put them on your page and you put them smaller the next time and you add a nice word like starlight and then you add another word or two like delphinium blue, then you can see how far fear has gone and how far anxiety has lost its impact. So take the poem and say to yourself, okay, there's the words I don't like. Put them at the bottom of the page and put the two words, something that you do like. And then if you add a photo or a drawing or a color even, you can totally change the whole concept of what that poem is about. So, and those are just very, very, very simple things to think about. Um, one thing I did like was when I came across the internet, this is our, your generation more than mine, was this young boy called Jordan who had put this poem on the internet saying, our generation will be known for nothing. Never will anybody say we were the peak of mankind. That is wrong. The truth is our generation were a failure. Thinking that we actually succeeded is a waste. And we know living only for money and power is the way to go. Being loving, respectful and kind is a dumb thing to do. Forgetting about that time will not be easy, but we will try. Changing our world for the better is something we never did. Giving up was how we handled our problems. Working hard was a joke. We knew that people thought we couldn't come back. That might be true, unless we turn things around. Unless we turn things around, that might be true. People thought we couldn't come back. We knew that was a joke. Working hard was how we handled our problems. Giving up is something we never did. Changing our world for the better will not be easy, but we will try. Forgetting about that time is a dumb thing to do. Being loving, respectful and kind is the way to go. Living only for money and power is a waste. And we know we actually succeeded at thinking that our generation was a failure. That is wrong. The truth is we were the peak of mankind. Never will anybody say our generation will be known for nothing. And again, this young boy actually did a very clever thing. He wrote the negative sense of the words and then he turned them completely around, turned the whole poem upside down, wrote it out again, and it became the most positive words of your generation. So in the idea of poetry being something that you can think about and it makes you think, I'm going to read a few of my own poems and a few of other people's just to see, to let you see how the power of some of these words can help. 
And like I say, always add a picture to your work if you can. These are just very simple images of hopefully um, beautiful uh, cherry blossom trees. And I can add a poem. After the shower, sunlight swells through this valley. Twigs drip burnt honey. The lake lures the moon. Shavings of light and shards fall. Elder flowers froth. It means a lot when you get an image and you put some words to it. So let's see how potent things can be. I'm not going to keep you too much longer. This is called The Laughing Heart because I want you to imagine. It's a poem by Charles, by Charles Bukowski, an American poet. The Laughing Heart. Your life is your life. Don't let it be clubbed into dank submission. Be on the watch. There are ways out. There is a light somewhere. It may not be much light, but it beats the darkness. Be on the watch. The gods will offer you chances. Know them. Take them. You can't beat death, but you can beat death in life. Sometimes. And the more often you learn to do it, the more light there will be. Your life is your life. Know it while you have it. You are marvellous. The gods wait to delight in you. There's always that thing about poetry um, making the importance. Um, as Rumi said, remember that you are not a drop in the ocean. You are the entire ocean in a drop. Just two poems I want to finish with, and these are two quite recent poems, if I can find them. <laughs> yes. Actually, three poems. I will, I will read this one because it's such a beautiful image. This is by Rebecca Elson. This is called Antidotes to Fear of Death. Sometimes, as an antidote to fear of death, I eat the stars. Those nights, lying on my back, I suck them from the quenching dark till they are all, all inside me, pepper hot and sharp. Sometimes, instead, I stir myself into a universe still young, still warm as blood. No outer space, just space. The light of all the not yet stars drifting like a bright mist, and all of us and everything already there, but unconstrained by form. And sometimes it's enough to lie down here on earth beside our long ancestral bones, to walk across the cobbled fields of our discarded skulls, each like a treasure, like a chrysalis, thinking, whatever left these husks? flew off on bright wings. Some of these poems that start quite dark, they actually f um, end with a, an amazing image of light and hope. And that's what I hope to get from poetry. Um, this is a poem I did a few years ago. The Colours of Peace. The Irish winter arrives breathless gasping out short, intense storms. A deluge, reluctant frost. Somehow the season offers itself again, intact and joyous, firelight reflections flicker, challenged only by sprinkled stars or excited innocence in a child's eye. December carries a scent of crushed pine, memories and sorrow thick as incense at a Christmas Eve funeral. Peel blue shirt to lay you out in. Tinge of fecancy on once sallow skin. But rituals are important. Layers of straw that form a strata of coping to stay. Bandaging and rebandaging of wounds. 
I place the two poncetta, my Christmas stars, one in the wild flame leaf of crimson, the other a quiet ivory, radiant and luminous. I like the idea of palms that go a journey. They go from light to dark quite often. And again, thank you very much for being with me. I would just like to say if anybody wants to send me anything at any time, um, do get in contact. I want to finish with this song because this song itself, this poem, is actually um, 30 years old. So the power of words, they never change. Love song. Ours is a seldom frequented skin. It hangs alone, out there, waiting, where the unfulfilled come to water, where a peach the sun squats and tints a sallow landscape, a Spanish rosé. I'll be your pear in a flask of sweet wine. You be an orchard on a sunny hillside and time will just waste away. And on normal days, we'll dance the polyglide with inherited patience, leftover symptoms from some raw deal, and we'll have no shadow, no imprint, no clue as to who I am, as to who are you. And I'll be your pear in a flask of sweet wine. You be my orchard on a sunny hillside. And time, time will just fade away. Thank you.